Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to episode 4 of Bucket Coding Remastered. In this episode, we're going to begin working on a message of the day plugin, and we're going to look at a little introduction to listeners. So the plugin that we're going to start in this episode and add to in some of the future episodes is going to be a message of the day plugin. The general idea is that when a user logs into the server, a message will be displayed containing, uh, you know, information about the server, perhaps any announcements, um, you know, a welcome, maybe a how to get started for new players, any of that stuff. And it's just going to display in the chat window for them so that they can see it. So I have the project already set up here. If you don't remember how to set up a project, um, you can watch one of the previous episodes because I go through um, setting up projects in all of those. Uh, but I already have one set up. Again, it's a source folder, uh, and inside of there is the plugin.yml. And the plugin.yml just has name, author, main, version, and description. Then our package and our main class, which mine is empty. You just want to make sure that it extends Java plugin. So once you have your project set up, uh, we can go ahead and get started. So we're going to uh, talk about a new concept that is very important to Bucket called listeners. So far we know how to write commands, but commands require a user to you know, run the command and know how to use the command in order for it to do something. But there are some times uh, in Minecraft where we want something to happen, not when a user tells it to, but when a user does something or when something happens. So let's say perhaps a block is broken, or a user decides to join the server, or an entity is damaged or killed, or anything like that. These are all events. They're things that happen on the server, uh, and we want to be able to respond to them. We don't want to make a user run a command in all cases for something to happen. When we're dealing with something like a message of the day, we want the message to automatically show up when the user logs in, instead of having them run a command. So obviously we can't use a command for this. Instead, we're going to use a listener. The listener will basically just wait until an event happens, and when it does, it will handle the event as we see fit. So there are a couple of different steps to making, uh, to registering a listener. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do when you want to use listeners is you have to pick a class that will contain all of your listeners. When you have a smaller plugin like this, you can actually put all of the listeners in the main class. Uh, but if you have a bigger project, uh, like a game, for example, or some sort of large utility banning plugin or something like that, then you might want to put your, um, your listeners in a separate class or maybe give each listener its own class, depending on how you organize everything. And by the way, we haven't looked at it yet, but a listener is really just a special method. It's just a method, really. So let's say that we want to put them in our main class, because this is what you'll do uh, in the majority of smaller plugins. The first thing you have to do is you have to write implements listener. And you want to go ahead and import org.bucket.event.listener. So whichever class you want to contain all of your listeners, it must implement listener. Now if we take a look in here, you'll see that listener doesn't have anything inside of it. This is not uh, decompiled correctly, but you can see that there's no listener, or sorry, there's nothing defined in here. This is called a marker interface. It's just the term for it. It means that it doesn't really do anything, um, but it kind of marks the MOTD class as being something that contains listeners in it. Not too big of a deal, I just wanted to point that out. So we need to bring back the on, uh, what is it, public void on enable. Uh, because we actually need to register the listeners. We need to let Bucket know that we care about a specific event and how we should, how it should go about handling this specific event. So we're going to do this inside of our on enable because when the server starts, we want to register our listeners so that they'll start working immediately. So to do this, we write bucket.getServer dot get plugin manager dot register event. Don't do the register event. That's uh, an older way of doing this. You want to go to register event. And you'll see that it takes two parameters. The first one is a listener and the second one is a plugin. So first you're going to put in whatever the listener class is. In this case, it's this class, so I can write this. 
if you were to put them in a different class, you would write new listeners or whatever you named your class. And then the plugin. The plugin is obviously going to be this, this extends Java plugin. Um, but you know, you're going to have inside of your on enable register events. So the second parameter should always be this because you're going to be doing this inside of on enable in your main class of your plugin. Uh, but the listener is going to be wherever the listeners are. All right, now let's go ahead and write a listener. First thing that we do is we give it the event handler attribute. So you write at event handler. I'll explain that in one second. Then you write public void, and you need to name your listener. Now, you can name it whatever you want. And again, this is just a method. So you can name this method whatever you want to call it. Uh, but the convention is you think about what event you're handling for. We're handling for the player join event. So I would name it on player join. If you're handing it for, if you're handling um, a block break event, then you would write on block break. But you can call it whatever you want. This will take exactly one parameter, and it's going to be the event that you're listening for. So this is going to be called a player join event, and you can name it. I'm going to call it E. I always call my events E. You can call it event or EVT or whatever, and you'll see that it imports event. So let's take a look at this. We have no errors, so that's a good thing. You'll notice that this looks just like a normal function, or method rather. It has a name on player join, and it has a parameter which is player join event, and we called it E. We're going to look at what player join event is in just a second, uh, but this event handler annotation essentially tells Bucket that this method is an event handler. And the way that Bucket uh, works is when you tell it to register events in a particular class, it'll go through that class and it'll look for all of the methods that are tagged as event handler. And then it'll say, okay, well this method is trying to handle a specific event and so we're going to handle it. It'll then look at the parameter and say, oh, you're looking for a player join event. Well, when that happens, I know exactly what to do. I'm going to find this method and I'm going to call it. So that is how Bucket knows what to do. And once we're inside of this method, uh, we can assume that this method will be called every time a player joins the server. Now let's take a look at what is contained inside of E. There's a decent amount of stuff in here. Uh, the important things that we need to look at, at least for a player join event, uh, would be get player, obviously the most important um, thing because we want to be able to send a message to the player. So get player is a method that will return the player who just joined. There are also some other things. There's set join message, but we don't want to set the join message. That would be the message that says, you know, Pogo 629 has joined the game. We don't want to change that. We just want to send them an additional message. And of course, there's a getter for it too, get join message. But we want to do get player. Now you'll find that for each event that you um, look at, you'll find different things inside of that class that pertain to the event. So in this case, we're talking about a player join event. So we have the player and the message that shows up when they join. And that's really all the information that we need in this particular event. That's all the information that's involved in this uh, event. So we can do e.getPlayer to give us the player who just joined. And then we can go ahead and send them a message. Now remember, this will only show up for the player who joined, which is exactly what we want, because we don't want uh, you know, everyone else to see the message every time someone joins. So uh, we're going to start off in this episode with a hard-coded value. We'll just say, welcome to my server. Uh, but eventually, we'll look at configuration files and how the user, or rather the server owner, can change the message to be whatever they want it to be. Um, so we will take a look at that. So now we have a pretty good setup here. We have a class which implements listener. We have our on enable method where we register the event so we know that we're trying to listen, or Bucket knows that we're trying to listen for an event. And then we have a listener set up here. It's just this it's just a method with, you know, an event parameter and the event handler annotation. And all we're doing here is we're saying that when a player joins, we're going to send them the message, welcome to my server, in gold. Now, unlike commands, you don't need to register anything in your plugin.yml. So in your plugin.yml for commands, you have to write command and then the name of the command and some information, but here you don't. All of the registration takes place right here in the on enable. 
So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to export this uh, as a jar file and I'm going to stick it in my plugins folder and I'm going to call this motd.jar and otherwise I think everything is good. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the servers started up. So let's see. That is all of my git stuff. Here it is, start server. And in the meantime, let's launch Minecraft. So essentially all that this plugin will do at this point is send uh, the message to the user when they log in, assuming that we have no errors. But this is just the starting point because we will uh, you know, add configuration and a command that will let you manage the configuration and other features. So this will become a fairly feature-filled plugin by the time we're finished with it, and it's a good example of a lot of different things. So we'll see first of all that the plugin loaded without any issue, so that's always a good thing. Let's go ahead and join to the local host server, and we'll see I log in, and in gold it says, Welcome to my server. So that's exactly what we expected. We said uh, that when the player joins, we want to send them that message, and you'll notice that I didn't type any command or you know do anything to make that happen except join. So this is a good example of where it makes sense for something to happen automatically rather than with a command. So this is the reason why we use listeners. So that is all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. And I will see you guys soon with some more coding videos. Bye for now.